Okay, in this lesson, we're going to explore graphs of systems of linear inequalities. In the previous section, 6.1, if you're one of my students of the study guide, we looked at how do we graph single linear inequalities and how does that apply um, as far as what it looks like and also to word problems. In this one, we're going to look at systems. So in section 6.1, we graphed one linear inequality and two variables on the coordinate plane. In the rest of this chapter, section 6.2 to 6.6, we will be graphing more than one inequality on the same coordinate plane. This is called a system of linear inequalities. So more than one is a system, kind of like your body systems. My digestive system is made up of more than one part. So we're going to be doing a system or more than one linear inequality. Uh, to help explain this, I'm just going to really just actually show you a solution to a system. So if we saw this system here, there's two inequalities, as you can see, and maybe I'll highlight them in specific colors. So we've got this blue inequality, which maybe we'll focus on the important part right here, and we've got this pink or red inequality. So let me kind of show you what that means. If I was to graph the linear inequality y is greater than x, that would look like, and you can look at previous lessons, that would look like this. So in all of these, in this region, all of these points, y is greater than x. So this point, for example, 1, 3, y is bigger than x. y is 3 and x is 1. y is bigger than x. y is bigger than x. So in all these points, y is bigger than x. If we look at this next one, it says y is less than or equal to 5. I can graph that inequality right here. In all these points, uh, in the red region, y is less than or equal to 5. So y here is 3. y right here is 2. y right here is negative 2. All those values for y is less than 5, less than or equal to 5. So <clears throat> in order to explain a system, a system would have both inequalities or multiple inequalities on one uh, coordinate plane. And the solution region is where they overlap. So you can see here, um, <clears throat> let me just show you an example. I have the solution region also here. Um, if I took this point, for example, so this is the point, I'm just taking a random point, this is the point 5, 1, that would not be a solution to both inequalities. So if we applied that, to inequality number one, you'll see that it's not a solution because it's not in the blue shaded region, but let me just show you uh, for y greater than x. Does the point 5, 1 work? Well, that's x and y here. So is 1 greater than 5? And the answer is no. So it doesn't. this does not, does not satisfy the blue inequality, but it will satisfy the red one where y is less than or equal to 5 because the point 5, 1 <coughs> would have a value for y being 1. Is 1 less than or equal to 5? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so when we're looking at these inequalities, just to explain the solution, the solution is already in front of us. Only the points that are within, or the region that is overlapping, is going to satisfy both inequalities. So if I took this point, for example, let's just take the point uh, right here, negative 2 and 2, that point will <clears throat> satisfy both inequalities because it's in the overlapped region. I can show you right here. So if we take the first inequality, y is greater than x, and we're going to look investigate the point negative 2, 2, <clears throat> we ask ourselves, is 2 greater than, is y greater than x? So is 2 greater than negative 2? And the answer is yes. Okay. As well as if we substitute that point into the second inequality, is y less than or equal to 5? Uh, we're using the point negative 2, 2. We're asking ourselves, is y, which is 2, less than or equal to 5? And the answer there is yes. So any point in this solution region uh, where they overlap would satisfy both inequalities. So it has to satisfy both to be a solution. Uh, we can look at another example. Let's kind of explain it to you and show you uh, here. So that's just the big idea. Graph each inequality. So if I was to graph this inequality here and this inequality here, you'll see them. I'll just really quickly show you what they look like. x greater than or equal to 2 looks like this. All these values here is where x is greater than or equal to 2. And secondly, y less than or equal to negative, negative x plus 6. All of these points where the red region is, is where y is less than or equal to negative x plus 6. So the solution to this system would only be points that are in this overlapped region. So for example, uh, this point right here, <clears throat> which is the point uh, 6, 5, it looks like. That would only work or um, 
be a solution in the blue one, not in the red one, because it's not in part of the red solution region. But I can show you here. We're going to investigate the point. So if we look at x greater than or equal to 2, we're going to investigate the point 6, 5. Uh, so is x greater than or equal to 2? Is 6 greater than or equal to 2? Yes, we know that's going to work. However, if we look at the uh, red inequality, is y less than or equal to negative x plus 6? So x is 6, y is 5. <clears throat> You're asking yourself, is y, which is 5, less than or equal to negative 6 plus 6? Is 5 less than or equal to 0? The answer there is no. Okay, so it's not a solution. Whereas a point like, for example, this point right here, which would be 3, 1, would be a solution. And I can show it to you right now. So if we're going to investigate 3, 1, is x, which is 3, greater than or equal to 2? Yes. Okay. If I try it in the uh, red inequality, so y less than or equal to negative x plus 6, you'd ask yourself, so we're investigating the point 3, 1. That should be a solution. Is y, which is 1, less than or equal to negative x, so negative 3 plus 6, is 1 less than or equal to 3? And the answer there is yes. So as you can see, these, where they overlap, would be solutions.